Have you ever pondered on the intriguing question of sonship in the Bible? It's a concept that's as deep as it is enlightening, drawing a clear line between two distinct identities, the seed of God and the seed of the devil. The seed of God or the son of God is a title bestowed upon those who walk in the light and righteousness of the Lord. They are the inheritors of God's kingdom, his chosen people. On the other hand, the seed of the devil or the son of the devil refers to those who have strayed from the path of righteousness and into the darkness. These two identities, these two types of sonship are not just a matter of birth. They represent a spiritual identity and a destiny. In the Bible, sonship is not merely a matter of birth, but also a matter of spiritual identity and destiny. Let's delve deeper into each type. First, let's explore the seed of God, also known as the seed of promise. In the biblical context, this seed symbolizes a divine legacy, a lineage chosen by God himself. It is first mentioned in the stories of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. These patriarchs were not merely individuals. They were carriers of a divine promise, a promise that would shape the course of history. God made a covenant with Abraham, promising that he would be the father of a great nation. This promise wasn't limited to Abraham alone. It was passed down to his son Isaac and then to his grandson Jacob. Each carried the seed of promise, the seed of God. Each was part of a divine plan, a plan that extended far beyond their own lifetimes. But this seed didn't stop with them. The ultimate fulfillment of this promise is found in the Messiah. He is the epitome of the seed of God, the one who would bring about the salvation of the world. This seed of promise is about more than just a physical lineage. It is about a spiritual lineage, a lineage of faith that is passed down from generation to generation. So the seed of God or the seed of promise refers to those chosen by God to fulfill his divine plan. They are the bearers of a divine promise, a promise that has the power to transform the world. Now let's turn our attention to the seed of the devil, also known as the seed of the woman. This intriguing term refers to the offspring of Eve and by extension, the entirety of the human race. According to the biblical narrative in Genesis, after the fall of Adam and Eve, God pronounced a curse on the serpent saying, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. This divine declaration sets the stage for a perpetual conflict between the seed of the woman, representing humanity, corrupted by sin, and the seed of the serpent, embodying the forces of evil. This struggle is not merely a physical or moral battle, but a spiritual war that spanned the ages. Yet amidst this grim reality, a glimmer of hope emerges. The prophecy also foretells a figure born of the woman's seed who would crush the serpent's head, signifying a decisive victory. This figure is none other than Christ, the Son of God, who by his death and resurrection triumphed over sin and the devil. Therefore, while the seed of the devil may denote those under the power of sin, it also holds within it the potential for redemption. This redemption, however, is not through human effort or moral reform, but through faith in Christ, who has defeated the powers of evil and offers new life to those who believe in him. Thus, the seed of the devil represents those under the power of sin, but also holds the potential for redemption through Christ. To wrap up our discussion, let's summarize the key concepts we have explored. We delved into the two types of sonship depicted in the Bible, the seed of God and the seed of the devil. We learned that these identities are not merely about physical birth, but also about spiritual rebirth. The seed of God is represented by those who embrace faith, righteousness, and the promise of divine blessings. On the other hand, the seed of the devil symbolizes those who reject faith and succumb to worldly temptations and deceptions. However, the Bible's narrative of sonship is not a story of predestination, but a story of choice. Our sonship is not determined solely by our birth, but by our faith and belief. It's about who we choose to become, the values we choose to uphold, and the path we choose to follow. In the grand narrative of the Bible, sonship is not just about who we are by birth, but who we choose to become through faith.